Hey, what up, trades? I wanted to do a video analysis update of the Dow Jones. If you want to see more videos just like this, go hit the like button and hit the subscribe button. I know it seems like I can predict the future, but I can't read minds. So if you guys like videos like this, let me know. Uh, the Dow Jones, I think, formed a large wave one. Uh, so it could also be I have wave one or wave A. Uh, this is based on an Elliott Wave principle called incompletion. It's a little bit to get into, but basically in Elliott Wave, there are impulse waves and there are corrective waves. The impulse waves are one, two, and in my opinion, three, shallow wave four, wave five higher. The corrective waves are A, B, and C. So how do we know if something is a corrective wave or an impulse wave? Well, if you're paying attention to what I said, there's actually a time in between when it doesn't matter, right? There's actually a time in between where it doesn't matter if someone is uh, projecting an impulse sequence or a corrective sequence. Now, that does not mean anything at all that I say is guaranteed because there is something in Elliott Wave called expanded flats and there are things in Elliott Wave called leading and expanding diagonals. Now, leading diagonals are a little more by the book. But as far as expanding diagonals go, and as far as expanded flats go, those are kind of the ones where, in hindsight, unless someone really knows what they were doing, they can always point back and say, that's an expanded flat. And what I mean by that is what you, what you see all the time, probably, on FinSwit and YouTube, I, I'm guessing, I definitely saw it for a long time, is that an Elliott Wave theorist can, saw, can call something an expanded flat forever. What's that mean? Well, before the Dow Jones made a new all-time high, the big debate was that this was a wave A, this was a counter trend wave B, and we were going to see the Dow Jones take a wave C lower. So when that didn't happen, oh, which, by the way, I mean, obviously you just truly said it wouldn't happen. But, Never mind that. Uh, the indices, everyone likes to pretend that the indices aren't more important than, you know, some of, some individual uh, small cap growth names. I don't know a portfolio manager who would say that. But anyway, I'm not a certified financial advisor. And I've certainly um, been very happy with my analysis of the indices. Anyway, anyway, when the Dow Jones did make a new high, Wave theorists could no longer say this is wave A, this is wave B, and this is wave C they're looking for. Under most regular flat rules and under most w, uh, double corrections, the reason I said W is because a double correction is often labeled as a uh, WXY. So when the Dow Jones made a new high above this wave one or wave A, wave theorists could no longer say that this is wave A, this is wave B, this is wave C, unless they were calling this an expanded flat. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, the regular flats and the double correction WXYs, they have a very clear invalidation. This wave one high, this wave A high. Expanded flats, on the other hand, uh, don't. An expanded flat just means this is a wave one, sorry, this is a wave A, this is a wave B, and wave B could just be going up indefinitely on either of these degrees. Maybe this is wave, uh, sorry, from this low. If this was wave A, once the Dow Jones makes a new all-time high, the bear argument has to be that this is an expanded flat. This is wave A, this is wave B, and we're going up way up here just to go down again below the slow for wave C. And so that's where people get this idea that Elliott wave theory is kind of bullshit. Because no matter what the, the real count is, someone at any time could always say that it's an expanded flat or it's an expanded diagonal. And most people just are never going to get in fat. I, and the other one people will say is that wave Z is coming. Yes, you've heard of WXYs. Sometimes there's a triple correction called a wave Z. 
when people hear about triple corrections, when people hear about expanded flats, and when people hear about expanded diagonals, you know, typically that's when they start to think that wave theory is just a bunch of uh, woo woo. To be honest, not a bad idea. Not not a bad idea to assume that wave theory is a bunch of woo woo. I'll get right back to the Dow Jones, I promise. And, and I didn't really mean to show you guys this perfect hit of the NASDAQ that I've had. Yes, you guys know I have had a perfect hit on the NASDAQ. You're used to it. But don't, you know, leave the wave guru behind. At least as far as the option premium ETF market is coming, we're seeing finally ETFs collecting huge option premium, paying 15 to 30% dividend yields where the total returns are outperforming the NASDAQ. Hallelujah. For real, let me hear an amen. That's that's the big thing. And look at bar chart right here on the NASDAQ. Fam, this is beautiful. These are dots. Leave the wave guru behind. Bar chart's kicking everyone's ass. Bar chart is kicking everyone's ass. And I've never seen anyone do it, robot or human. And honestly, unless bar chart is running these AIs, I'm going to tell ChatGPT, I'm going to tell Google Gemini, I'm going to tell all these AI, whatever neural network bots, you're not beating the bar chart, trend seeker indicator, call in equities on the NASDAQ weekly chart. That's just my opinion. That's just my opinion. Going back to the Dow. I believe, and hey, bar chart straddles. By the way, this says it uses Elliott Wave. Notice how it looks like those dots are right between the third. It's right at the thirty-eight point two percent retracement. They're even more precise than me. Anyway, I'll get to what I think. Option premium income ETF arms races that Yield Max started and that JP Morgan started. They're making me obsolete. Leave the wave guru behind. I think this is a large wave one and a large wave two. But even if it was a large wave A and a large wave B. I personally believe the Dow Jones is in an incomplete bullish sequence. It's gone five waves up. One, two, three, four, five. Wave three makes the highest high. Wave four and then a wave five ends with momentum divergence. I believe this wave five took the form of an ending diagonal. One, two, three, four, five ends with Momo. An ABC correction that was well past the 38.250% retracement. I called this perfectly on XLI. I'm going to do the Dow uh, just because it's more recognized. So the length of wave A placed at the wave B high is where the term incomplete comes from. It's roughly 47,300 is uh, an incomplete bullish sequence. It's the equal legs target. All that's a fancy way of saying it's the 100% extension of the length of wave 1 slash wave A Place at the wave two, wave B high. That gives a long term number on this degree one, two, three, or A, B, C. That's a larger degree cycle. There's three cycles on this chart. The most important and the largest is wave one, wave A, wave two, wave B, incomplete to wave three, wave C, is my opinion. That's roughly 47,300. The second sequence you see twice. One, two, three, four, five, ABC. One, two, three, four, five, wave one slash wave A, ABC, wave two slash wave B. Those are all the same degrees. Also the same degree as wave one and wave two. But then I believe that this big wave three and wave three, if this is wave three, is the most aggressive almost always in Elliott wave theory. The only exception to that rule is the, the commodities markets. Um, wave five can be the biggest wave. But from the cycle, within the same one, two, three, four, five, wave one, wave A, 
A, B, C, wave two, wave B. This is another wave one and wave two on the same degree. And then another smaller degree, wave one and wave two forms. Why? Because this wave three, the larger de largest degree wave three slash wave C is the biggest wave. Even if it's a wave C, typically a, the 100% extension is kind of still a little early to be calling for the end of wave C. The 127.2% extension is kind of the Goldilocks level just right. The 161.8% extension is typically where growth will end uh, a wave C. And the growth can even clip that. Um, but one, two, three, four, five waves up. So within this smaller degree cycle, wave one and wave two, I believe this is another wave one and another wave two. This is wave three. Wave four is retesting the wave one high. So the invalidation levels, 36,383 is the 50% retracement. That's a little tight. I like this, the 61.8% retracement. It's a better invalidation. It's a more realistic invalidation for a wave four, um, especially on the Dow Jones and Indus. I'm going to use 35,445, and I like that it's just slightly below this small degree wave one high. Why? Because in Elliott Wave Theory, not super tight rules that if someone is, you know, um, you know, taking way too literally wave four, retest the wave one high. So I like that this 61.8% retracement lines up with this wave one high. Wave four, honestly, very quietly, the trickiest wave to trade. That's why I'm always really big on catching wave two uh, in wave B and knowing where wave three ends. One, two, three, four, five waves up. I'm looking for the Dow Jones to, her to hold above 35,445, 45,000. 45, sorry, one more time. I'm looking for the Dow Jones to hold above 45,445 to 45,000. 848 that'll be a little tighter this wave one high and i'm looking for in the long term the destination is 4000 uh, is 47328 the way that i believe the dow will get there it's going to hold above this invalidation level one two three four five waves up and start beginning the series of uh, what's called three four five and then yes ideally three four five it's a fancy way of saying that, you know, I think 47,300 uh, is the destination. The way to get there might be a little choppy, but uh, thankfully, Mr. Market, i.e. Papa Dow, if you will, uh, has provided a solution where now almost all of the investable market has a option premium collecting income ETF for it. So, uh, hallelujah, leave the wave viewer behind and have a great rest of your week.